Today is a happy day. I'll tell you why. It's because uh, Uganda uh, started drilling its first oil well in what is known as the Kingfisher Oil Field. This began on Tuesday, by the way, uh, and it is hoped that by 2025 that the first of a potential 1.4 billion barrels of oil will be pumped from wells across the Midwestern region. Of course, uh, this, I think, marks an interesting new chapter. For the longest time, we've been talking about how we have oil and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I don't know, I've just been waiting for things to start moving. But finally, it looks like uh, there's now some action. Are you excited about that or is this a big nothing? No, it's not a big nothing. I mean, a lot has been said about our oil, uh, how we are going to export most of it and we're not going to make money out of it. But I still believe that us starting to drill the oil is going to change our fortunes as a country. I would hope so. Have you heard of the oil curse, which is where a country that discovers a huge deposit of a particular resource, usually it's one or two mm. main uh, like natural resource, which then the government focuses on because it's the one that brings the money the quickest. And so they focus only on exploiting that resource, which they export and they bring in money, the money which then just gets squandered by the rich, uh, powerful elite. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, be, and they would have done nothing to invest in the other sectors of the economy mm -hmm. for as long as they think the oil is there, it's all good. Mm. Uh, and so many countries find themselves impoverished. There are many, I think Gambia is a good example. Uh, and there may be a few other African countries that have fallen in, in you know, victim of the oil curse. So um, Uganda has a long way to go. So yeah. much uh, infrastructure development is necessary. So many other uh, in sectors are in need of support for which the government does nothing. I feel like in uh, handing over oil to Uganda, I feel like uh, we are putting ourselves in a very dangerous position. What do you mean handing over oil to Uganda? Uh, what I mean is, I guess, nature gifting Uganda with oh, oil. No, I, I think uh, as countrymen... We're we now need... vulnerable to the oil curse. We could be, we could be. And this, of course, especially given what our government is like and the things they've done in the past, if they could eat money that is meant to save lives like in the global fund. But still... And, and I hear you because there is the other thing. Most people argue that if we are going to export our oil, we may not really benefit from it unless it, it, uh, we may not benefit from it like we would if we refined it here and exported a finished product. Yeah, uh, that's right. Now, obviously, I know that uh, there's there have been discussions of a pipeline yes. which the European uh, Union Parliament has been objecting to and y basically Uganda told them to go shove it where the sun <laughs> don't shine. <laughs> Another uh, African leader has been that. <laughs> Uh, I would hope though that if we engaged in the refinement process here that we can benefit in terms mm. of being a market for that uh, finished product like exactly. the petroleum. Mm. Hopefully I, it could reduce our oil prices. Obviously, if fuel we price. have the oil and it is refined here, our fuel prices would go low. Um, countries like Libya, before Gaddafi, you know, was killed, mm -hmm. they had a great deal of development because of finding oil internally and, of course, refining it. That's where the Arab countries got it right. I mean, for them, they have used their oil so well to develop mm. their uh, nations. That's uh, true. Because... Uh, did I read that Dubai wants to host the Winter Olympics? Yeah, they want to. Imagine <laughs> a, a country, country that doesn't have winter. <laughs> this is so funny. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, on the petroleum issue, um, there was a debate that was supposed to take place uh, on Tuesday at the Emerald Hotel in Wandega that was being organized by the African Initiative on Food Security and Environment. And guess what happened? Um, basically, uh, opposition leaders Robert Chagulani, that is Bobby Wine, and Kiza Besije were invited uh, to this debate as uh, main speakers, but unfortunately, police blocked this debate from proceeding. Yeah, that's true. Police said Why? that. Um, police, you know what they say? They hide behind that um, public order management bill, and they say that the uh, the debate hadn't been legally organized, but then the African initiative that had organized it said they had sought all the necessary permissions, and it was legal. But last minute police swooped in. You know, what happened was that the president was launching the start 
of the oil he was launching the oil rig in um Bulisa Chikube district and then these guys wanted Which district? Chikube. Is it's that a in, district? Yes it is. Must be a new one. Never heard of <laughs> one it. One of those so many new ones. And then so the president was there to launch and then these guys wanted to have uh, a debate on the ECOP in Kampala as far as uh, climate change is concerned. So that would be like going against what the president was doing because there the president is saying this is good for the country and these guys are here saying that it is maybe affecting climate change. There you go. Well, for us, we need the oil. Too bad for the climate activists. We don't have time. Uh, we need to uh, exp exploit this oil and uh, use it to help develop the country, of course, uh, using all possible due diligence to ensure mm. that uh, it is not uh, the, the proceeds are not squandered and that it is uh, put to good use. But one can only hope. Yeah. Keep listening to the Fat Boy Show on RX Radio. Beep, 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 beep.